Hello again, Old Tuvi here. This week has been very interesting. As you may already know, Donald Trump's now going to be the 47th President of the United States. Some people like me are very happy. Others act like they're going to get thrown in the gas chamber in January. But, yeah. And here's other news. Unfortunately, I just heard that Sega is going to delist the Sega Genesis Classics Collection on every platform. Not even sure why Sega is doing this. Do they hate money or something? I don't know. But what we got here is a lovely compilation full of 50 Genesis games. We got stuff like most of the Sonic series except for Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. We got the Golden Axe series, Streets of Rage. Oh yeah, here's me playing the Shinobi 3. One of the best ninja platformers of all time. I absolutely love this game. It kicks so much ass my ass is black and blue. And yeah, here's me pressing square like a dumbass because me thinking square is the B button. <laughs> but yeah, Shinobi 3 rocks. I'm actually playing this collection on PS4 because the Switch version is absolutely ass. Has lots of input lag like a lot of multi-platform Switch games. Sega never updated the Switch versions, but they actually did patch the PS4 and Xbox One ones. But yeah, this collection is barrels of fun. 50 freaking Genesis games. Yeah, here's me switching to another game. Gonna pick something really, really awesome. Hmm. Let's see. Ooh, Biohazard Battle. That's one of the freaking many hidden gems on the system. This is actually one of the few schmuffs Sega actually made besides Fantasy Zone. And this is really a kick-ass game because it kind of reminds me of our type. You play as these weird-ass creatures coming out of a ship. You're not even a spaceship, you're just some weird-ass looking bug, monster, whatever that thing is. And you go around blessing other mutants and stuff like that, I don't even know what the hell I'm going against. And yeah, this game is actually two players co-op, so if you have a buddy, you can actually play this together. I definitely recommend Biohazard Battle. For some reason, this game never gets brought up in any Genesis combos, but I'm changing that right now. I think this is actually one of the best games in this collection by far. It's really weird, but barrels of fun. Next up, we're going to talk about the Sonic games that were never on Sonic Origins Plus. This is Sonic Spinball. This game has mixed opinions. Some people love it, some people hate it. It's actually pretty damn hard for a Sonic game. I'm actually one of those people that actually love Sonic Spinball because it combines elements from a Sonic platformer and a pinball game. Unlike the normal pinball game, the goal of the game is not to rack up points, but you have to look for the Chaos Emeralds scattered around the table. And once you get all the Chaos Emeralds, you can go fight Dr. Robotnik, Eggman, whatever you want to call him. I think this game's a classic. And here's me playing the Japanese version of Streets of Rage 3. You can actually switch regions in this collection. I switched to the Japanese region because the American version of Streets of Rage 3 is total ass. They made the game way too hard for the rental market and they censored some parts. But yeah, in this collection you can actually play Bare Knuckle 3 in all its glory. Uh, no censorship, no weird colors. You can play it as it is. You can go around kicking ass. You can pick Blaze, Axel, Skate, Xan. Yeah. Some people think it's worse than Street Trace 2 because they most likely played the crappy American version, but I personally think it's just as good as Street Trace 2. The only thing that's worse than Street Trace 2, in my opinion, is the music, of course. But in Street Trace 3, you can actually run. There's now a separate button for kicking, and you actually enhance your special moves depending on how many stars you have. You simply get more stars if you don't die repeatedly. So if you don't suck at beat em ups, you can actually do super powerful attacks later on in the game. But yeah, Street Rage 3, Bare Knuckle 3, whatever you want to call it, it's a lot of fun. I think it's underrated. And yeah, we're going to talk about another hidden gem. Another favorite of mine that not many people talk about. This is E-SWAT. Basically, Sega's answer to Robocop. Aesthetically, it kind of reminds you of the Robocop arcade game, but this has more in common with the Shinobi series. So yeah, you start out as a cop without armor, but as you go along the game, you get promoted and you get a badass suit of armor. So... Yeah, this is a very cool running gun platformer shooter. I definitely recommend E-SWAT. And speaking of awesome running gun platformer shooters, this is actually my favorite Sega Genesis game of all time. And no collection should be without this gem. We got Gunstar Heroes, Treasure's very first video game on Sega Genesis, made by ex-Konami employees who worked on Contra 3 and Axe Light. Gunstar Heroes. Looks like Contra, but way more cartoony, very colorful. 
So if that's rare for the Genesis title, Treasure actually did make use of the Genesis color palette in a very good way. So yeah, as you see, lots of action on screen, no slowdown, very chaotic game. Gunstar Heroes, such a classic. And this one never came out physically on Sega Genesis in the US, it came out on the Sega channel only. This is Treasure's second run of gun shooter, this is Alien Soldier. It's way harder than Gunstar Heroes, I'll tell you that. So yeah, you play as some weird alien superhero thing with a bird head, you choose a series of weapons, and unlike Gunstar Heroes, it's like boss after boss after boss, like the whole game is almost entirely bosses. Much like Contra Hawk Corps, you go against a boss like every minute. Like one minute you go against a series of popcorn enemies, and the next minute you go against a mid-boss. Oh yeah, unlike Gunstar Heroes, your ammo is limited, so you gotta be really careful what weapon you use. You gotta keep upgrading them each time. And if you get a life bar full, you can actually do a super dash attack, which comes in handy going against these bosses. Block those enemy bullets by pressing B rapidly, you can actually turn those bullets into health power-ups. So yeah, Alien Soldier. It's not for everyone, it's way too hard for most casual gamers, but if you're a masochist like me, go for it, you won't be disappointed. If you're an RPG fan, I'm happy to say there's a lot of RPGs on this collection. This one has bangers like Beyond Oasis, Landstalker, Light Crusader, Fantasy Star series, Shining Force series. And what I'm playing right now is the best RPG of the bunch. This is Fantasy Star 4, Sega's magnum opus in my opinion. This is actually the best RPG on the system. And you know, I must say if you never played a Fantasy Star game before, this is a great game to start. This is actually very, very awesome. Lots of anime cutscenes, very awesome battle system. Yeah, Fantasy Star 4, such a masterpiece. So this concludes my Sega Classics Collection Retrospective. If you want this game now digitally, you got till December 6th to get it. If you want the physical, I get it right now before prices soar. Just get it on PS4, Xbox, or Steam. Avoid the Switch version at all costs. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. More retro content to come. See ya.